What's up guys? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. Today I'm going to talk about five paradoxes when cultivating mushrooms. So I've been growing mushrooms for over five years now here in Colorado. I'm at my new studio in Sedalia, which is attached to my new mushroom building. I'm going to talk about some of the philosophical discoveries that I've had leading up to this point growing mushrooms. Number one, one of the biggest paradoxes that I see new farmers struggling with is that the more blocks in one space makes less mushrooms after a certain tipping point. So this is kind of determined by the CO2 output of those mushroom blocks. Right when I was starting, I had a four by four fruiting tent and the first batch I put in two blocks. And I waited and waited, and I ended up getting a really nice flush of oyster mushrooms. So at that moment, I caught the itch, and I decided to go all in. I got a 55-gallon drum and a, a propane heater, and I went to one of the local woodworkers, got a heaping pile of sawdust, and started cranking out batches and batches of five-pound mushroom blocks. Now... The first batch got contaminated, so that was a whole different problem. But after about two or three more batches, I started getting way too many mushroom blocks. So at one point, I had 80 or 90 colonized bags, and I only had a four foot by four foot fruiting tent. So I tried to shove in as many blocks as I could, and then as soon as they would flush, I'd pull them out and put a new block in. And what I discovered was that over time, the mushrooms that were being produced out of those grow bags was smaller and smaller and smaller, and they looked all deformed. And one of the most important things to understand in growing mushrooms is the fresh air exchange, which is kind of related to the volume of air available in a grow space. A lot of people think that you can just shove in 50 or 60 bags into this little 10 by 10 tent, and you'll be able to produce the same volume as that single bag from my first flush. So that is one of the first paradoxes in mushroom farming is that the more grow blocks you have doesn't necessarily mean more weight. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Number two, colder temperatures produce higher quality but slower mushrooms. Okay, so how do I break that down? Some of the challenges here in Denver are that especially in the winter time like right now temperatures are dropping below freezing and if you're doing the fresh air exchange properly you're pulling in air from the outside so I always thought that it would be a lot easier to just heat that air and you know keep my temperatures consistent however it got really expensive so I did an alternative approach and just tried to work with whatever air was coming in. And I discovered that in the spring and the fall, I got really good quality mushrooms. They grew a lot slower. So instead of getting a 6 to 10 day flush on my oyster mushrooms, it was taking about 14 to 16 days. But I was getting magnificent mushrooms. So if that helps anyone out there, just know that you can still grow mushrooms in the 40s and the 50s, but they're gonna take a lot longer. So maybe you wanna change up your grow cycle if you're dealing with colder temperatures. So that's paradox number two, is that temperatures can go lower than what you think, and you're gonna get really good quality mushrooms, but at the same time, they're going to grow much slower than normal. Paradox number three, the more people who grow mushrooms the more people know about mushrooms and the higher the demand gets. So there is a lot of competition and sleight of hand among the mycology community. Um, I try to avoid that type of conflict because my philosophy in the mushroom world is that a rising tide raises all the boats. Since I've started here in Denver, there was probably about four or five mushroom farms at the beginning. Now, I've seen about a dozen or 20 start. Some of them are still around. Some of them shut down because of different issues. But 
Since then, the demand for mushrooms has skyrocketed. So I'm of the belief that everyone is about three people away from knowing Paul Stamets. So the more and more people who know about mushrooms, the more demand there's going to be. Because when I was growing up, I didn't even know about lion's mane. But over the past five or six years, everyone now knows about lion's mane. They're calling me about lion's mane. And I credit that to the mycology community in general and not just myself preaching about the benefits of these mushrooms. So that's paradox number three. The more people who grow mushrooms, the higher the demand for mushroom gets, which is kind of weird to think about. All right. So number four, the fourth paradox of mushrooms, the longer you grow and study mushrooms, the more you realize how little you know. Okay, so this is known as the Dunning-Kruger effect in psychology, but the more and more of these videos that I produce, the more I realize that I don't know anything. So I like to go out once or twice a year foraging with some of the older guys in the, the Colorado Mycological Society because they put this into perspective really easily. For example, this year when I went out to the Telluride Mushroom Festival, my wife and I and one of our friends spent all afternoon or in the early morning, I guess, um, just picking all these different types of mushrooms. And we had a whole basket full. And I thought, oh, at least half of these have to be edible. So we took the gondola back down to the town and we laid out all these mushrooms on the ID table. And as we were going through those mushrooms, one of the, the founders and the greatest mycologist ever, she was uh, at the table um, identifying all these mushrooms that I had laid out. And one by one, she was like, not edible, not edible, poisonous, not edible. And the more and more mushrooms she went through with my basket, the more I realized that I had no clue about any of the mushrooms that were out on that mountain slope, except maybe four or five that I've cultivated myself. So it's always good to kind of have perspective on what you know. And I try to stick to producing videos on firsthand experience. Most of my videos is just documentation of my journey. And then some of it is lab based from my personal experience coming up to starting my mushroom farm. That is a really important paradox that right when you start growing mushrooms, you think you know everything, you write down the numbers on, on a napkin somewhere, and you think, oh, I can start this huge mushroom farm, and it's going to be profitable by the end of the year. But just know that the deeper and deeper you get into this world, the more exploration there is to do. So I think that's very exciting. I'm a person who's always craving more and more knowledge. So this paradox fits really well with my personality. I know for some people it could be pretty frustrating, you know, getting deep into the mushroom farm and realizing that you need a lot of help that you didn't think you would. Paradox number four. Number five is another weird one. The more batches that fail, the more likely your farm is to succeed. So I see this happen over and over again where a new farm will start and they will invest 95 to like $100,000 into this awesome fruiting setup. They'll take out a loan, rent out a 5,000 square foot warehouse, and then lo and behold, two years later, they're out of the game and break even or lose a lot of money. Um, and that is a really sad thing to watch. And that is because they didn't follow this paradox. Failure is really hard to digest, especially in mushroom farming, because contamination will make all of your hard work void. So my suggestion to this paradox is that you fail as often as possible in small batches. My wife was really good at pushing back in the early days when I tried to really scale our grow quickly. She saw, you know, the early success that I had but then all of those problems with shoving the mushrooms into that grow tent led to this realization that, okay, well, we can dial this back. We're just going to go to the farmer's market and sell what we grow this week. And then I picked up some part-time jobs along the way to, you know, balance our income in the meantime. Along the way, 
I had probably contaminated 400 bags or so within a three month period of time. Now, if I went all in and, you know, produced thousands and thousands of blocks and then didn't experience those failures, I probably would have wasted a lot of money and a lot of time and effort. So this is a really important paradox. Fail early, fail often. Don't get discouraged. Even if you start off as just a hobby grower and your first monotub just goes to crap, don't give up. Do smaller tubs next time. Get like a little shoe box or grow them in jars and do something where if you failed, it's not going to be the end of the world. And that is how you can handle this paradox of mushroom farming. Okay, guys, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Comment below if there's any other paradoxes that you guys have come across growing mushrooms. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. Um, we're going to be producing a lot more videos now that I have this dedicated studio. I'm really going to try to utilize this. If you notice, I've got some, some microscopes next to me here. So I'm going to dive into microscopy, um, more breeding, and just more documentation as we continue to grow our mushroom farm. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys. And um, I hope you are enjoying this content. Check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. Uh, we got some cool swag and different liquid cultures. Um, I'm going to be releasing a lot more in the springtime. I've spent the past couple months really dialing in our gene library. So I'm excited for 2023. Okay, guys, give us a thumbs up, and until next time, much love.